In the Desmos activity, you learned that a tangent line and a radius drawn to the point of tangency are always perpendicular to one another. They form a 90 degree angle. And this is known as the tangent theorem, which is that if a line is tangent to a circle, then the line is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. There's only one radius we can draw to a point of tangency. The next thing we need to understand for this module, and it's really the last thing before you apply all of your knowledge, is that if we have a chord on a circle and we have a radius that is perpendicular to it, we, that radius bisects the chord. You can see that both of these segments are the same length and we're now going to prove that. This is known as the radius and chord theorem. So we are given that AC and XB are perpendicular to one another and we wanna prove that the chord is bisected or that these two pieces have the same length. First, we know that these two angles are right angles by the definition of perpendicular. We can then draw triangles because everything comes back to triangles. And hey, we're probably gonna use Pythag. So we know that they are both right triangles by the definition of a right triangle because they both have a right angle in them. We also know that AX and XC are both radii of the circle, so therefore they have the same length and are congruent. By the reflexive property, both triangles share the line segment DX, so it's congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And at this point, we can use the hypotenuse leg theorem. And remember, that just means if the hypotenuse are congruent and we have one side that's the same, then obviously, if we applied the Pythagorean theorem, these two sides would be the same. So finally, by CPCTC, we can say that the third side of the triangles are congruent since the triangles themselves are congruent. And hopefully you remember that CPCTC means congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now let's look at the converse. Let's say we don't know that the lines are perpendicular, but we know that the two parts of the chord are the same length. So this is the proof for that. We're given that AD and DC are congruent to one another. We draw a triangle. They're both radii. So all radii are congruent. So now we have two sides, and now we can prove that the third side is congruent by the reflexive property. We have side, side, side congruence. So we can say that all of the angles are congruent as well via CPCTC. Since these two angles form 180 degrees, right? They're supplementary because they form a line. We know that if two angles are supplementary and congruent, they must be 90 degrees. So therefore, if these two angles are 90 degrees, the two angles, the two lines are perpendicular, or the two segments. So let's do two practice problems. In this case, AB is tangent to C at B. We're given two, the, we're given a side length and a hypotenuse, and we know this is a right angle. So here comes Pythag. We know that six squared plus B squared equals 10 squared. We subtract 36 from both sides. B squared equals 64, and B equals eight. You might also notice that six divided by two is three, 10 divided by two is five. So we really have a three, four, five triangle that is scaled by a factor of two. Our last practice problem, AD is a radius and it's perpendicular to BC. BC equals five and AC equals three. And we're asked to determine the area of this little triangle. Well, remember that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. If this is a radius, this is also a radius. So we know that AD equals three. We also know that EC is half of BC, so it's equal to 2.5.
we have our base and our height. We multiply those together and we get our, the area of the triangle. Remember that in all of these problems, you're looking for whatever relationships exist. So the two things you've learned in this video is that a radius drawn to the point of tangency of a tangent line is always forms a 90 degree angle and we can we're therefore going to use Pythag for a lot of things. We also know that a radius that bisects a chord, a radius that is perpendicular to a chord bisects that chord. And those are the two things, the last two things you know before you apply all of your knowledge.